the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Hello everybody, thank you for saying yes, I'm going to keep Sunday holy. And today you're going to hear one of Jesus' favorite breakfast foods. I think, or you'll have to wait for the gospel to hear what that is. For the times that we have not prepared a place for our Lord in our hearts, let's ask Him to forgive us and turn to Him at this time of grace, this time of forgiveness, this time of repentance. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the sender of the Holy Spirit. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Lord, let your face shine on us. Lord, let, let your, your face, face shine on us. When I call, answer me, O my just God, you who relieve me when I am in distress, have pity on me and hear my prayer. Lord, let, let your, your face shine on us. Know that the Lord does wonders for his faithful one. The Lord will hear me when I call upon him. Lord, Lord let, let your face shine on us. O Lord, let the light of your countenance shine upon us. You put gladness into my heart. Lord, let your face shine on us. As soon as I lie down, I fall peacefully asleep. For you alone, O Lord, bring security to my dwelling. Lord, let, let your face shine on us. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be Lord to Lord Jesus, God. open the scriptures to us. Make our hearts burn while you speak to us. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. 
Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so we're going to get a little help today from... Uh, my favorite poet. Who is your favorite poet? Father Dave. So my favorite kind of poetry, for those who like poetry, it's not everybody. I like Anglo-Saxon poetry, um, but we're not going to read one of those guys today. Uh, and I'm using my glasses because I'm getting older. So I got these cheap uh, dollar store or uh, CVS glasses uh, and they're great. So Sam Hazo, Samuel Hazo is my favorite poet from Pittsburgh. Um, American Catholic, he's just great. I'm not going to do the whole poem, just a couple stanzas from a poem called How Married People Argue. It goes like this. Because they disagreed on nuclear disarmament, because he left the grass uncut, because she spilled a milkshake on his golf bag, he raced 10 miles faster than the limit. Stiffening, she scowled for him to stop. His answer was to rev it up to 20. She asked him, why a man of his intelligence would take out his ill temper on a car. He shouted in the name of Jesus that he'd never ever lost his damn temper. She told him he was shouting not to shout, that shouting was a sign of no intelligence. He asked the back seat witness who was totally invisible to anyone but him why women had to act like this. She muttered men as if the word were a mouthwash and she was spitting in his sink. It goes on. It's a great poem. So why start with that, Father Dave? So why are they fighting in the car? Or rather, why is he driving differently and she's giving him attitude? It's their, their behavior in the car is different because of fights that took place and these other dopey things that took place beforehand, right? Because they disagree on nuclear disarmament, because he didn't cut the grass, she's going to give him attitude, because she spilled a milkshake on his golf pad bag, she's, he's going to give her attitude, right? <laughs> like all these dopey things that like Sam, who was married for many years, God bless him, and his wife, God rest her soul, um, he knows from the inside that I don't. And I, when I hear things like this, I'm like, man, you know what? Marriage ain't easy, and I'm glad I'm a priest. <laughs> God bless all you guys out there who are married. I'm praying for you. I'm not called to marriage, but you are, right? Their behavior in the car is different than a normal trip because of these things that took place outside the car. All right, let's keep going with some of that, right? So sometimes you're driving, you know, and, and as you're driving, let's say there's, a, there's someone who's going really slow in front of you, like annoyingly slow, right? And maybe the oncoming traffic is, is also moving slow, but you can't pass them and the roads are turning and it's, you know, it's a solid double line and you can't, you know, you can't get around them. And you're just annoyed and you're like, come on, come on, right? And then what happens is you see, and the person maybe in front of you is doing this, just barely doing the speed limit, right? And then you see a cop car. Then what happens? Oh, the person in front of you, oh, what a good driver they are. They're a wonderful driver. They're a beautiful driver. What a noble driver, right? Because they're doing the speed limit. You're forcing you to, and, and then you see the cop car, you change, right? Now, I'm not giving you permission to be the, on the vehicular, uh, you know, enforcer of the laws, right? But that happens, or you're on a highway, and you see everybody suddenly slow down, and you're like, why are we all slowing down? It's not an accident. And then you see a cop car, and you're like, oh, that's why we're slowing down. And you wait till you're like, can we pass them? All right, go. Right? I wonder if cops off duty do the same thing, right? Like they're 5050, right? Like that's what we used to say. Or that's what you said in the 90s, I guess, if you saw a cop. But like, anyway, the, the seeing, like, what changes your behavior in driving in that group of people, let's say on the highway, is, well, you saw someone. Who did you see? You saw the cop. Once you see that car, your behavior changes because there's a, the cop is present, right? Last, you know, last thing there, um, 
you know, you're, let's say you're in high school and you're in love and you're dating and you're at your boyfriend or girlfriend's house, you know, and you're getting a little kissy kissy on the couch or something like that, right? If his or her, you know, uh, mom walks in or their dad walks in, what do you do? Well, you keep a little distance, you're gonna get a little more separated, right? You're not gonna be like, you know, uh, orally examining each other's face, right? If your parents walk in, you're gonna change your behavior because someone else is there, right? Because you see that person. All right, now we're set up to understand, of course, the gospel, right? The apostles on Good Friday, why did they run from Jesus? Because something else happened, because he was arrested by the state, right? Because, well, the Jewish guards took him, you know, on Holy Thursday night, they, you know, they took him and then he was handed over to Pontius Pilate and he was executed, he was murdered by the power of the state and the apostles were scared as heck for their lives and they just ran because they're afraid that they're going to like suddenly like you know knocks are going to come to their doors and the doors will be kicked open and they're going to be dragged out and executed with them because this is what Rome would do right so they're terrified so what changes something changed because these guys who were terrified who were like running from God suddenly are going out to the ends of the earth telling everybody and not afraid to be with him, that Jesus is what? Well, he's alive, right? What happened is they saw him. That's the only explanation for the change of their behavior. Because, you know, you're driving, you're going really fast. Why would you slow down? Because they, you see a cop. Your behavior changes because you see a cop, right? Your behavior with your boyfriend or girlfriend changes because you see the parents, hopefully, right? The apostles' behavior of these, like, scaredy cats who want to preserve their own lives are changes because now they're not afraid and what will happen? They're going to be sawed in half. They're going to be skinned alive. They're going to be boiled. They're going to be speared. They're going to be crucified upside down. And they don't care. Like, they're not afraid to die. What happened? Right? And when their loved ones die, like their friends, you know, are executed and their friends are killed, their friends die, they're writing these different things. They're saying that we don't grieve like those who have no hope. We know our loved ones are still alive and we're going to meet them. Right? Like, what how do you explain that behavior? Well, the answer, of course, is they saw Jesus. Like, you see that cop, your behavior changes. They saw Christ, and he's alive. And, and well, so there's that. Um, and this, of course, like, the guys see him on the road to Emmaus, and Mary Magdalene sees him, and St. Paul will see him, right? And, and he'll appear to 500 people at once. We talked a little bit about that last week. And they're telling everybody about it, and they see him, right? And Jesus is willing to engage them. In, in some of their fears and some of their doubts, right? So two messages for you and me today. One, God is with you, right? and nothing is going to take him away from you, right? And the apostles, once they understand that, then they're not afraid anymore, right? He rose from the dead, and that wasn't just for him, that's for us. That's why he came back, right? And so if he's with you, you don't need to be afraid, right? John Paul II would say all the time, do not be afraid. I think of my, my little dog, Cragley, when she was a puppy, she'd get scared by different things. And what would she do? She'd run right around behind me, right? She'd run and, and like hide behind my legs. And it was, it actually made me feel really good that she knew I was gonna be safe. Wherever, whatever noise or clanging metal or something that she was scared of, she'd be safe with me and she would be. Remember, like I think I've mentioned this before, I remember going to a haunted house in um, Lake George with my, with my godson, my nephew. And we went in, he was all brave ahead of time, and then we got there and they were terrified. And like this little guy like was clutching on to Uncle Dave with all his little might. And I was like, don't worry, dude, ain't nothing gonna harm you. And I took out my flashlight, or I took my cell phone and put on the flashlight. And I was trying to show him, look, ain't nothing to be afraid of. And the, the staff is like, sir, please shut off your flashlight. I'm like, I'm trying to protect my godson, right? When God is with you, you don't need to be afraid. And he is with you and me always. Jesus says, I am with you always. Right? I will never abandon you. I will be with you to the end of time. Right? And the apostles, they don't understand this at first, and he has to like teach them. They're like, death ain't going to stop my presence with you. You know, and, and it, he, he's willing to work with them, right? So, you know, if you follow a squirrel, if a, you're chasing squirrels with your dog, and your dog sees it run up a tree, well, your dog could still be looking at one tree, but you know the squirrel will say, jump to another. And you got to teach your dog, hey, he's not on that tree anymore. He's over here. Right? The apostles are so used to every, you know, people dying, and that's it, that they think that's the story. And then Jesus comes back, and he's trying to show them, look, I'm alive, and I'm with you. Look, you can touch me. You know, so as like a kid, you're like, yeah, come on, touch me. 
like like a fight. He's not doing it like that. He's like, look, put your hand here, right? And then, and he's willing to engage them. So God is with you. You have no need to be afraid, right? That's a simple homily. There's more advanced one. I'll give it real quick here. The advanced one is so. There's that. The advanced one is that God is willing to engage you about what you have right now, what you have going on. Right, so the apostles, he sees them and he knows that they have, you know, questions in their head. And so he said, why do you have questions in your head? Right? Could he have just like done this and removed their questions? Yes. On the road to Emmaus, he opens the scriptures over seven miles. So what is that, like two and a half hours, three hours of, of walking and talking? Right? And then they get to this room and he opens their mind like this. God can heal you like this and he can heal you over time. Right? He can teach you like this and he can teach you over time. He can make you grow up like this and he can make you grow over time. Right in the Old Testament, there's a donkey that is given the ability to speak, speak just like this from Almighty God, right? Some of us, it takes like years teaching your dog speak, say hi, you know, you know, roof, you know, like what's above the house, the roof, how's the carpet feel, rough, right? God can work immediately and he can work over time. He's willing to engage you and I though, I guess that's what I want to highlight here. So, so what does Jesus do? He's like, hey, do you have any fish, right? And, and, you know, this is, he's eating fish in the resurrection and the second time he's eating fish. And I think, like, if you and I get to heaven and all they serve is fish, what are you going to say? Holy mackerel. <laughs> like, can I have a transfer? No, like, why is he eating fish? Because it's what the apostles had, because they're fishermen, right? And he's trying to prove to them that he's physically there. He's not just in their mind. He's not just a ghost. He's not an apparition. He's physically there, right, with his full life. And then when you proclaim the gospel, you want to say sometimes, like Jesus says, um, you know, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them, and he said to them, these are my words. And I sometimes when I preach this, I want to go, Jesus goes, these are my words. When I spoke to you, well, I was, but he, you know, we don't act out the gospel. We just proclaim the gospel. So, all right, Father Dave, Jesus is with us, and he wants to engage us. Like, actually, what does that mean? That means whatever you're experiencing or going through, you and I can and should be engaging with Christ about it and talking with him. You know, remember in school, like, you know, the group projects? I hated group projects. I hated them. Because I was, the, I, was one, I was like one of the only dopes who did the work in the group project. If you had a group project of four people, guess what? I'm doing, you know, you think everyone's going to do 25%. Now, there's some dopes like me who are doing like 100% or 85% and everyone else is just doing the minimum, right? And like, and I'm still resentful about that. I guess I got to pray over that, right? And other pe some people want to do all the work because they're controllers and they don't trust other people. But sometimes you get paired with a bunch of freeloaders because the teacher's like, "Hey, you four are on a team." And you're like, "Really? Th these dopes? <laughs> like, I'm sitting next to them because my name start my last name started with S, not because I would choose to." Teachers, I've had, I've had good teachers too, but many of you know what I'm talking about. And many of you are freeloaders who had other people do the group projects. Like you have a science project in school and then it becomes not your science project, it's your parents' science project. That's not how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be your science project. Get it done. But anyway, like God, he wants to engage with us in reality. He's looking for partners, right? The image that he uses about um, a relationship with him is that of, it's two things. It's marriage and, and another, I'll say it for just a second, right? So marriage. Is marriage 50-50? Don't answer. Right? Some people want to say the answer is 50-50. No, marriage ain't 50-50. Marriage is a fluid reality that takes 100%. Right? So there's going to be days in your marriage you know, where it's 50-50 and you're doing this and she's doing that. There's going to be days where, like these couple, there'll be days where either you are both doing zero and days where you're both giving 100. Like it's a fluid thing. It's not going to be like, well, today, you know, Tuesday, I'm going to give 80%. My wife's going to give 20. And then Wednesday, she's going to give 80. I'm going to give 20. It's a fluid reality, and it takes all that you have, all the time. And your whole life is to be shared with the other person, and you're not to hold anything back. And so if that's the operative image for God and his relationship with us, which it is, which is he tells us, then, well, then we're to hold nothing back from God. And so, so wherever you are, and whatever you're undergoing, can be opened up to him if you're willing to, right? So the Jewish people, they weren't supposed to have a king. They wanted a king. 
And God's like, well, you don't need a king. I'm with you. And they're like, we want a king. And he's like, it's going to go bad if you get a king. We want a king. God's like, all right then. Let's get a king. Right? Could Jesus have fed the 5,000 just by like eliminating their hunger drive and f raising their blood sugar? Yeah, he could have done it just like that. Could he have fed the 5,000 by having, you know, um, be cloudy with a chance of meatballs and like food is falling from the sky? Yeah, he could have done it just like that. What did he do? He says, well, what do you have here? And there's a little boy who's got five loaves uh, and two fish, right? That boy, maybe he, had to, maybe he had to take that home to his parents, but he was willing to trust in this rabbi, and he's offering that food. Maybe it was for his family. He's willing to share that with Jesus, and Jesus multiplies that. He gives the apostles to pass out. He could have just then teleported it to all of them. He doesn't do that. Right? God is willing to work with us which is a little more messy. Some people like it all set, and there's like accountant types of people, there's controllers that like everything set and rigid, and it's not all like that, and it's not all just free for all also, right? As in your prayer life, you should have set prayers, and you should have just regular spontaneous conversation with God. It's, it's not either or, it's supposed to be both, right? So like the Jews, when they left Israel, not when they left Israel, when they left uh, Egypt to get to Israel, where God could have teleported them right there, he didn't do that. He makes them wander in the desert for 40 years. He's willing to work with them. And they're like, we want this and we want that. And he's willing to engage with them. Right? So like, God is with you. Well, if you lost your job, well, then talk to him about that. And then invite him into that reality of searching for a new job. Right? And if you were going to soccer practice, you could talk to him about soccer practice. And if you want to like major in poetry, then say, Lord, I want to major in poetry. And talk to him about that. Like he... He really wants to be a partner, and he can be, and he can make you and me his partners. Right? This last piece here, the other analogy that God gives for his relationship with us is that right, of a shepherd who loves what? His, right, his sheep, his flock, my sheep hear my voice. Sometimes people say to me, and I get this a lot because we have a big parish here, say, ah, Father Dave, you know, I lost my dog or my cat, and they're terribly sad. Of course they are. And then they want to know, will I see them again? It's like, hello? Like, how often do you need God to talk about sheep and, and goats and a man's love for his flock and his sheep and my sheep hear my voice to get that? Like, God understands from the inside our love for animals and their love back and their obedience back. And that animals behave different when they're shepherd, when they're master. Like, Cragley's different when I'm around her. And we're called to be different because God's around us. And, and, like, you know, Jesus says, a bird can't fall in the woods without the Father knowing like god gets your love for animals because he put it in you and it's some of his love for animals it's not from you really he pours his love into you for them you're sharing in his love for creation he makes them before he makes us right and from evolution they you know we they evolved before we evolved right not the soul the soul is created directly by god but the body evolved all right so like have no doubts you'll see your animal again have, like, otherwise, why is Jesus using these, these images over and over again, right? The Lamb of God. I mean, come on, people, get it. If you lost your pet, don't get angry at God. Engage him in that. Talk to him about how you feel, where you're at, and how you don't want to go to walks anymore because you used to walk on that place with your dog or something like that, or your spouse, if you lost your spouse. Don't you like... I bring this up. You can get angry at God. You can get angry at the mailman for the rain, but he didn't make the rain. He's got to work in spite of it. Right? When the bad thing happens in life, well, invite God into that and talk because he's already there and talk to him about it. He's with you. Don't be afraid and be open to conversation and engaging with him about whatever you're undergoing. With Jesus, we live not just for him, but we live through him. We live with him. We live in him. This is why you're not afraid, right? Don't be afraid because he's, he's with you. We're not afraid to engage him. And it's more like, you know, having, well, having a marriage, a great marriage or a good friend that you go through life with. You go through life with and you go through life in. Because that's how we're called to live. Do not be afraid. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. 
Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Raise our prayers to Almighty God. For church leaders, May the Lord guide them in caring for the physical and spiritual needs of those they serve. Let us pray to the Lord. Sit. Lord, Sit. hear our prayer. Good girl. For civic leaders, may the Lord grant them fortitude in defending the dignity and sanctity of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who are struggling in their faith, may they be strengthened by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all gathered here, may the Spirit renew us in the hope of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. For all who have died, may they rest in eternal peace with the Father in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Uh, for the end to coronavirus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For peace in the world, especially the Holy Land, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And now for those petitions we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. Mighty God, we ask you to hear the prayers which we ask uh, on your day through Christ our Lord. Amen. that my sacrifice and yours would be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exalted church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But at this time of Easter, above all, to laud and praise you yet more gloriously, that Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim it. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we would be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, a Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, St. Mark, and St. Therese, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries and sacraments may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brag to sleeping back there. We're going to let her sleep. Uh, so some good news to share with everybody. First, I want to say thank you. Thank you for everybody who was praying on behalf of my family. Uh, so my brother Tim got some really good news. His bone marrow biopsy came back. Uh, this is like the third or fourth one I think they've done. And it came back this time, no detectable signs of cancer. So thanks be to God those prayers were answered. Uh, he'll have to keep doing follow-ups and things like that. As, as so, sadly, right, some of you or your family know, those who are doing chemo for cancer. So thank you for your prayers. Uh, we, I put St. Therese to work every single day. I was praying that and meeting to St. Therese, asking her to help. And I told the parish this morning, I, I got two roses the other day. And yeah, on Sunday, someone gave me a, a they had given me some food they made for Father Dave, and they put two roses in the bag. And do I like roses? Not at all. <laughs> not at all. I'm not a big flower. I'm not a flower guy. You know, I get flowers when I was dating. You get flowers for your girlfriend, sometimes for your mom, your grandma, stuff like that. But I'm not a flower guy. Um, although the flower show in Philly is pretty cool. If you ever got a chance to get out there, it's actually pretty cool what they can do. But I got these two white roses, and I was like, oh, I wonder what this is about. And that was the day before the eclipse on Monday. And I put up a little video of, of the sun, of God really smiling down on us. And that's what that, the sun made me think of. Because the second one, some of you know, not all of you know, but my mom had a series of heart attacks. Uh, and she, her arteries are all clear. So our prayers were answered there too, which is really good news. So thanks everybody for praying. We're still praying for, you know, everyone else online. Just tell them, thank them for my son's prayers because the treatments are working. Diane says thanks for praying for her son. Uh, the treatments are working. Uh, Pete, his, he's about halfway, halfway uh, to, right, to back halfway through his treatments. Through his, through his treatments. So thanks everybody for praying uh, on, on Diane's uh, son, Pete. And Jess says, hey, thanks a lot. No. <laughs> right? Jess says, thanks. Any other things? Well, your uncle needs prayers. Well, your kids are all right. Everything's good there. Good. She prays that she doesn't hit the wrong note. Uh, and what do I have for you guys as a corny joke here? So someone told me this. One of you guys wrote me a letter and put this in there. Um, so I'm going to use it. Why does the... Why do Easter? Why are Easter eggs hidden? Because they're each a little chicken. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. We'll see you guys next week. Live your faith, right? We'll put it in, and do not be afraid. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. It's your friend! Oh boy! Oh boy! Yeah! Oh boy! Oh boy! Life is great with a friend. <laughs>